Hi, I'm Dave Henry. You're in my shop, and I'm glad you're here. My subject is again bird mouth joinery, a fascinating technique that has been largely neglected by modern woodworkers, but which can be ideal for otherwise difficult projects. This video offers a different approach than earlier ones, going deeper into project construction details. Today we're going to make a sturdy portable toolbox using the eight side router bit. Here are the parts for this project. I've already milled them square and flat and cut them to size. This is the body of the box. These are the parts for the lid of the box. They're in three quarter inch stock. Uh, I've also routed the grooves that will hold the top and bottom in place in the completed box. And these are the top and bottom of the box. I've already fabricated them as you can see. Uh, also, I have done the handle of the box, uh, which has been carved and incorporated into the, into the piece that will become the top of the box. This advance work was done to put emphasis on the birdmouth joinery and to avoid common procedures that are familiar to many. Well, uh, here are the parts for the body of the box uh, laid out so you can get some idea of uh, what our target is will actually look like. Uh, when it's finished it will be 20 inches long, 8 inches wide, 8 inches high, including the lid. Here are the four corner pieces. Those are in lychee wood. The ends and sides are in canary wood. Uh, here is that groove that I mentioned earlier, the half inch groove that the bottom will slot into when the, bo when the body is assembled. Here is that bottom piece. It uh, is in, uh, let's see, this is, yeah, Santos Mahogany. This is a piece of booming gum. And that will, of course, have to be shaped once the body is assembled. And this is the top, and that will, of course, will fit into the lid and has to be shaped similarly to the bottom. This is a parts list for those of you who can't wait to get into the juicy details. My wood choices are arbitrary. In this case, largely a collection from my overflowing cutoff box. So what's left to do after all that preliminary work? Well, uh, quite a bit. First, we have to route the bird mouth joints. There will be eight of them in the body of the box and eight more in the lid. Then we dry assemble the body of the box and use that as a template to shape the bottom and the top. After that, we assemble the entire project and think about the glue up process. It's complicated and needs to be done in the right order. After that, we'll just glue it up, we'll sand it, we'll finish it, and then we'll know what the project really looks like. In cutting the birdmouth joints, we have choices to make. The cuts can be made either in the ends and side pieces, or in the corner piece, or of course, both. Notice that the joint will be between the end grain of the side pieces and edge grain of the corner piece. I have chosen to route the end and side pieces because a V groove into the end grain gives two surfaces and yields a superior glue joint with the edge grain of the corner staves. Thus the canary end and side staves will have a bird mouth cut at each end and the lychee corner piece will have no cuts at all. Okay, let's cut those birdmouth joints. I have set the height of the router bit point to a hair over 3 16 inch, just right for a 3 quarter inch stop. I'm going to cut the joint in three depth of cut steps. Let's start on one of the end pieces.
Now the cut on the second edge. And now the side pieces. As you can see, I use a large flat push block to help keep the work pieces square to the fence. Next, using the same router settings, we do the lid pieces. The lid parts are narrow, so more care is needed in holding them square to the fence. What I do is use a piece of wide masking tape to secure the workpiece to the oversized push block, as you can see. After all joints have had the first cut, the fence is adjusted for the second deeper cut and all parts are again processed. Here is what the still incomplete joint looks like after the second cut. Last, after a second fence adjustment, the final cuts are made shown here using a side piece. So here's an end piece from the body that we've been uh, cutting on. There's the joint. And um, here is the fit between the corner piece and that end piece, nice and tight, you can see. So let's uh, clean this thing up a little bit, get the fuzz off, and see what the uh, body looks like assembled. Okay, so I've cleaned up the parts. Now we put them in place. and throw on a band clamp. More on that in a moment. And there you got it. Everything solidly in place with tight joints and ready for fitting the bottom. Before going to shaping the top and bottom, let's take a closer look at the band clamping, using the lid as a more easily seen example. Okay, here's the dry assembled lid frame. As you can see, the lid fits the body assembly very nicely and with very little tinkering. I'll use the lid to trace the top and bottom shapes. Before going on, here is a close-up of a couple of the lid joints and the slot for the top piece. I have marked the center line of the top and also the center points of the ends of the lid frame. When these are lined up, the handle is centered in the lid. Okay, here's the trace. And next, uh, I enlarge the trace by one quarter inch all the way around. The bottom piece was drawn in exactly the same way. Okay, let's cut out the top and bottom. I will use my bandsaw for this. I'm demonstrating this uh, with the bottom piece, but the top was done exactly the same way. Depending on how steady you are at cutting straight lines on a bandsaw, 
you may have to sand the edges a bit after shaping the piece. Okay, we've got the bottom shaped. Let's reassemble the body, including the bottom. Now throw on the lower band clamp again. Then the upper clamp. And here's what the dry assembled body looks like. Okay, let's do the same for the lid. And here's what the fully assembled lid looks like. Okay, let's talk about the glue up. The dry assembly shows that everything fits, so how do we put it together permanently? If you are fast and accurate with placing the glue and the piece is small, it is possible to do it all in one step, but that can be disastrous if there are unexpected slowdowns. You know, the glue starts drying before you're ready to assemble and the parts no longer fit. In this case, I will use three glue-up steps as is easily permitted by the birdmouth joinery. We will first glue together half of the body parts, these four, then the other four through the birdmouth joints, and then we'll finally put the two halves together through the remaining birdmouth joints and insert the bottom at the same time. What I am doing here is taping together the two sets of four body pieces. The tape helps a lot in speeding up reassembly during glue up. And there's what it looks like. Now do the other end. Okay, we're done taping. With the tape in place, we can remove the band clamps and each set of four parts can now be handled as a unit. As you can see, handling them this way allows easy glue application. And for each of the three steps in the glue up, speedy reassembly of the body with every part in exactly the right position. So, after gluing each of the three birdmouth joints in the first tape set, we temporarily assemble again to hold the joints in the right position while the glue sets. After an hour or so, we can remove the band clamps and see how the glue up went, and then repeat the procedure for the other four taped parts. Okay, now we are left with the three pieces needed for the final body glue up. I put glue on the two body half subassemblies, including the groove for the bottom, but it is not necessary to put glue on the bottom itself.
If all goes well, the bottom will slip nicely into place. And we can put on those band clamps uh, for the last time, hopefully. And take them off. Leaving us with a glued up box body. The lid glue up is similar, except I've used only two steps because there is a lot less glue to apply. Masking tape is again very helpful, but it must be applied to the loose parts using a straight edge, as shown. Using the same technique as on the box body won't work because the band clamp on the smaller lid parts interferes. Let's just zip through this lid glue up. It is repetitive. And there's the completed lid. Well, we ended almost as we began with a lot of off camera work. After final glue up, I installed the hinges and the lid lock on the toolbox, did the final sanding, and finished it with a wipe-on polyurethane over a shellac base. Here is the final product. I'm happy with it, although it is a bit heavy and I especially like the way the canary wood brightened up with the poly finish. I'll close with a 360 degree rotating view. Thanks for watching.